And talk through us first, BitCloud. I mean, it's sort of exploded in popularity. It's a proof of concept, you say, for DSO, the actual underlying blockchain. Talk to us about what DSO is. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yes, so obviously the Facebook outage has really shown how heavily we've come to rely on a single corporate entity for our information needs in the world. Uh, and the interesting take that we have is that the free market is going to break up Facebook, not regulation, mm -hmm. through DSO, which is the decentralized social blockchain. So DSO, uh, which we work on, is a blockchain that is custom built from the ground up uh, to power social applications. And the goal is to decentralize social media in much the same way that Bitcoin and Ethereum are decentralizing the financial system today. Um, now, what's interesting about uh, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum is they've done a very good job uh, kind of showing what happens when you put uh, financial data and transactions on an open platform, uh, but they're not really good at powering social applications. They don't scale um, and uh, they're, they're not really good for that. In contrast, DSO is custom built from the ground up for that use case uh, and can essentially take what is currently today a privately held monopoly over content, which is what Facebook has, and instead turn it into an open utility that anyone can build on. Mm -hmm. And that's really uh, important, and that's how it's gonna, the free market is essentially going to take over. You've built BitCloud. It has its own native cryptocurrency, Cloud. How is that working? How does that incentivize people to use this particular dap and and create on it yes it's a great question so bitcloud is an app that's built on the decentralized social blockchain the DSO blockchain it's one of actually over a hundred apps uh, and we actually started a 50 million dollar fund called the octane fund to start funding even more applications to build on the blockchain um, and that's because the future of social is, is actually thousands of developers with thousands of apps and thousands of feeds that you can choose from, a lot more competition and innovation, again, rather than you know, three companies that control everything. Um, but back to your question, um, really, there, there's two disruptions. The first is um, that, that uh, taking what's currently a private monopoly and turning it into an open utility, taking the content, making it an open utility. But there's actually a second disruption that comes when you uh, use a blockchain to power social uh, applications, um, which is that you get access to uh, money native or investment native features that are very difficult to do uh, in a centralized capacity. So uh, in particular, uh, DSO supports uh, NFTs and social tokens. Um, and it also supports what is currently a social tip called the diamond, uh, where just mm -hmm. if you like a post, you can give a like, but right to the right of the like button uh, on apps like BitCloud, you have a diamond where you can give anywhere from a penny to $1,000 with just a single click. Uh, and that simple feature is actually very difficult to do if you're not, again, building on a blockchain native uh, backend like DSO. Um, and that's actually a new business model that's going to disrupt the ads-driven business model where instead of monopolizing content to show ads on it like Facebook does, all the content is open and creators make more money by uh, directly uh, interacting with their fans via these investment native or money native features. First effort, NFT social network, you call it. Funny you call it Diamond, of course, which Diamond Hands was your pseudonym. I'm, I'm interested, Nada, in why this helps perhaps against, you know, misinformation, against the spread of content that, that isn't uplifting, that is divisive. If you're, because sometimes being divisive actually gets you more likes and could incentivize people to be earning more money. Absolutely. Um, and so if you look at content today, like I said, it's a privately held monopoly by a handful of companies. Uh, and that means that when misinformation is spreading, we, the public, the government, actually have very little transparency into how it's spreading and why it's spreading. Uh, and not only that, but private companies are actually often misaligned in the sense that they make more money when misinformation spreads because they can show more ads or more effective ads on misinformation than on real truth. Uh, and so with DSO, we really turn everything about the ads-driven business model on its head and make all the content open as a utility that anyone can build on. And when you do that, suddenly the best machine learning researchers in the world, without asking for Facebook's permission, can build really strong models to find harmful content that we don't have access to today. And additionally, when it comes to the spread of misinformation or things like that, there's much more transparency. Uh, for example, even the federal government can be involved in watching the spread of misinformation when the content is an open utility and actually doing something about it, um, you know, rather than uh, relying on uh, privately held misaligned companies that, uh, that are not actually even trying to find it, often are trying to make it spread uh, because that's their business model. How would you do something about it, Nana, whether it be the government, whether it be the creators themselves? 
Yes, so um, with DSO, the, the moderation problem, which is kind of what we're talking about, is something I've thought about more than any other uh, aspect of the system. And um, the structure, uh, when you have all the content on a blockchain, again, is actually thousands of apps uh, made by people all over the world, not just in one country, not just in Silicon Valley. Um, and when that happens, um, it actually becomes uh, much easier to regulate in many ways, uh, especially when the content is open. So for example, lists can be published of well-known harmful content, uh, and the government can pass regulations that say, if you're showing this harmful content, uh, you're liable to civil litigation or even federal litigation. Um, and uh, you know things like that can be done that can't be done today when all of the data is closed in private. And that can actually be much more efficient uh, than, again, relying on private misaligned companies to, to police everything. Now, now, briefly, you know, interestingly, you've attracted funding from the likes of Andreessen Horowitz, of course, who put money in Facebook to begin with. How do you feel the tide is turning in terms of wanting to see a more decentralized social media? Who is coming to your platform, not only the financial backers, but also the users? Of course. Well, the crazy thing is uh, BitCloud and the other 100 apps that have built on top of it have attracted a really diverse user base, uh, you know, not just crypto people, but also mainstream people. So Taiga, Antonio Brown post regularly. Many others have claimed their accounts, such as Diplo, Blau, uh, you know, obviously some investors as well, like Chamath uh, and others. But um, really, I think what's shocked me is that uh, obviously, investors want to make money, and, and you know that's why they back things. But in the case of DSO, I really think there was another angle, uh, you know, not just making money, but more about we need to move the world in a more positive and less divisive direction. And I think you'd be surprised at how much uh, the people who are involved with the project, other than me, uh, including investors, including users, really care about that mission and, and are behind it. And like I said, it's, it, the free market is going to break up Facebook with new technology like DSO. Uh, and, and that's always a better solution than if you have to come in and regulate something.